Amen. God is good all the time. Let us say a prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, our personal Lord and Savior, our collective Lord and Savior, the one who died for us. And we receive the fact that Jesus Christ died for us on that cross. We know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and we accept Jesus Christ in our hearts as the Savior of this world who rose and died for all of our sins. Yes, indeed. We are grateful, Father, for the countenance of the Holy Spirit, Father, for the endowment and the counsel that the Holy Spirit gives us, Father. We are acknowledging you, God, right now in this prayer, because we know how potent and how powerful and how prolific and how magnanimous you are in all your works, God. And we do realize that truly you have no name. You are the nameless one. You are the uncreated that created everything, God. And we acknowledge and we love you for that fact. Thank you, God. And we pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, our Savior, by way of the grace and the mercy and the countenance and the counsel of the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. God is good all the time. Let us discuss today how to receive the counsel of God, how to receive counsel from all of the messengers that God has all across this beautiful planet we have here. God will have you see a sign on the street and later on that day, somebody might say something similar to it. Like, man, you might want to take that exit. You might just want to go ahead and take that left right there. And you may have missed the left turn earlier that day. You might see a time on the clock and somebody might correlate some numbers to you and that may mean something to you. God has many ways of applying his counsel to us. Now, are we aware of the fact that God is consistently sending out communications to us, almost like radio frequencies, almost like how the internet works. It is unseen communication that is transmitted. And that is how God works because our human mind is God's computer. The human mind is the original computer. It is the original superhighway. And there is nothing more potent on this planet than the mind of a human whose mind is made up on something. And that is what God wants for us. God wants us to lean in and be dedicated and have our mind made up to complete those assignments and in those tasks that are given to us in our daily lives. And sometimes we feel as if we might have just a simple day and there's nothing really for us to do that God doesn't have any major task for us to do. But some days when you feel that there is no task for you to do, it is just mundane and time is flying by. You might be an example to somebody who is having a horrible day because you are focused, you're diligent and you are doing your assignment and you're not complaining because the person next to you might be hearing nothing but complaints but yet you go to work every day and you don't complain and you just do your job. You think that God doesn't award that? Yes, God is using you as an example to show other individuals that they too can remain positive. It's no excuse for them to not look at what you are doing and how you are getting the assignment done that God has put before you. So yes, there are some days that it may seem that it's mundane, but you could be the example for somebody on a day that may seem like it's just regular, just by you taking care of your normal assignments. But then there are days to where things seem tumultuous, things seem as if they are out of control, things seem as if they will not steady themselves out. But we also must remember the disciples, they also went through a situation like this, crossing over a body of water a simple body of water, but they had to call upon Jesus. They had to wake Jesus up. And Jesus told them, peace, be still. 
because people believe that Jesus was just speaking to the waters. But no, Jesus was also speaking to his disciples. Have peace within your heart and be still within God. Pray within God. Know that you are with me and that this vessel shall remain whole. So the storm that the disciples were experiencing as Jesus was sleeping peacefully after a long day of work, that storm was a message. That storm was actually a counsel for the disciples. Now, why would I say the storm that the disciples went through was a counselor? For the disciples because when they awoke Jesus Christ our Savior the Nazarene Jesus spoke those words peace be still and he was not just speaking again he was not just speaking to the waters Jesus was speaking also to those disciples to let them know I am with you and we must understand when we go through storms in our lives physical storms we have storms that are emotional we have storms that are just uh, uh, hypothetical. But anytime we go through these storms, we must have peace. Because Jesus, the Bible, God has told us an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Now think about what an idle mind truly is. Just how a car, if you sit at a light and you see your car and the RPMs on your car, they are always in consistent motion. They go back and forth quickly. They idle back and forth. It does not stay still. And that's what an idle mind is. An idle mind is a mind that can't focus on one thing. That's what an idle mind does. An idle mind goes back and forth. It teeter-totters. It is on a pendulum. It is on a swing. It is in a consistent revolving motion. But when you are focused in on God, that is all you see is God. So you are able to understand that, yes, I am going through a storm. Yes, I am going through a situation that is causing anxiety in my life. But I'm going to be still and I'm going to focus just on God. I'm not going to worry about all the muck and the mess and the messages that are in front of me, to the left of me to the right of me and all the mud that is behind me, I am going to stay rooted in the word of God. When you make that spiritual discipline call, because that is all about spiritual discipline, then you will be able to hear and you'll be able to receive all sorts of messages. A bird landing on your window ledge could be a message from God because a bird was created by God. You just don't understand how everything vibrates is because of God. So once we receive the fact that we are made in the image and in the likeness of God and everyone else around us too was made in the image and in the likeness of God, we are closer to receiving the counsel from God's counselors that God has placed in our lives because keep in mind God flows through all of us the very person that you hate or you dislike God loves we must remember that so we must learn how to get over our own physical emotion and pick up our spiritual endowment because the Holy Spirit is here with us right now Again, we know that the Holy Spirit is here with us right now. Our ancestors, through Jesus Christ, were anointed with cloven tongues of fire through the Holy Spirit. Our comforter, our all, the Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit. And we must realize that if we realize we all were made in that image and likeness, then we are able to receive counsel from the next person. 
You are able to put away your personal feelings and receive counsel. We cannot just do this in a professional capacity. We cannot just receive counsel, listen to a coworker, listen to customers, listen to people complain at work, but in our own endeavors in our personal life, we sit all that discipline to the side. I say no to that. No to that. If you can be disciplined at work, if you can be courteous and nice to strangers on the street, you yourself can do that to people in your life and you can treat your own self better. One of the original ways to be able to receive God's counselors is to tell yourself the truth when you look in the mirror and ask yourself this question. This is a very important question and I ask you, and you must be honest with your own self. I'm looking you in, in your eyes and I want to ask you, as I look you in your eyes, when was the last time that you looked in the mirror and told your own self, I love you with your name attached to it? Just that. My name is Travon. So I look in the mirror and I tell myself, I love you, Travon. When was the last time you've done that? Just that. When I ask people that question in person, they have to think about it. And a lot of the replies I get is I've actually never said that. And some people say, yeah, I, I say it, I, I do that. But do you do it? Do you truly do that? Do you truly look in the mirror and say, I love you with your name attached to it. And that is it. Because And look yourself in the eye because you were made in the image and in the likeness of God. So when you look your own self in the eye, you're looking in the eyes of God because you were made in that. You are not God, but you were made in God. I am not God, but I was made in God. So when I look at myself and I can receive the love of me, then therefore I will be able to spread that love upon this entire world. That is the catch. And I'll be able to receive counsel and love from other individuals. There are billions of people on this earth. But yet, in theory, if you have one good friend for your entire life, you've done something well. But there are billions of people on this planet. And what does that say? That says we need to learn how to reach out to each other more. And this is one of the ways. This is God's outlet. This is God's account. This is God's center. Social media. We as God's people, the children of God, the followers of Jesus Christ, the Nazareth. We who listen to the Holy Spirit must step up and we must go out and spread the word of God because if thine be lifted up, we should draw all men unto God. So we must lift up God. We must lift up the word of God because the ones that can provide that counsel, are you doing it? Are you speaking out and are you speaking up? Not just where you are. Are you bold enough to vocalize yourself if God has given you the capacity to speak? If you cannot speak and God has given you sign language, are you bold enough to utilize that and speak and spread the word of God? However you can communicate, if you can communicate, Communicate the word of God. This is how we receive counsel is by spreading the word of God through this entire world. Not spreading our word that we speak of God, but God's word is what we want to spread, is what we desire to spread. And that's how you receive the counsel. Because it is fundamental things. It is not anything that is out of the ordinary. Everyone wants to look for the supernatural, not realizing that you are supernatural. We are made up of everything that is within this universe. 
not just the globe, not just the planet Earth, but the universe. There is gold in our bodies. But yet we love to wear gold, but we're made up of gold. We are made up of silver, zinc, iron, platinum. We are made up of these materials, of these matters. So once we realize that God has placed all of these matters with inside of us, then we can receive the counsel of God. Once we realize that, that the stars in space, we are made up of that. Once we realize this as a whole, that the next person to you is also made up of that, then we can receive the counsel of God, because this current generation that we live in is the most blessed generation to ever grace this planet Earth. This generation is. And why am I saying that this generation is the most blessed generation that has ever walked the planet Earth? Because we never had to see Jesus Christ in the flesh to believe in Jesus. It is over 2000 years since Jesus roamed this earth. And we believe in Jesus more than they did then. Jesus Christ the Nazarene, there is no human that has been more popular to ever grace this planet. Jesus has done more work in 2,000 years of being gone. And we believe in Jesus more and Jesus not being here than they did when Jesus was here. So we are truly blessed to have as much faith as we have. We have as a generation more faith than that of a mustard seed. But are we collectively acting upon it and we counsel each other because that's how we receive the counsel of God. We have to look at the Holy Spirit and speak to the Holy Spirit and speak to God and speak to Jesus. We cannot sit back. We can't sit back and expect things to come to us. We must also go there. We must also meet God. God meets us where we are, but we in turn must meet God. God has always been searching for us because God asked us first in Genesis, where art thou? Where art thou? God's first question. So what are you telling God? Are you saying, God, I am here? I am right here, God. God, I, I, am, I am here. I'm located here. God will meet you where you are and God will provide the answers and God will give you the counsel that you need. God will give you all sorts of counsel in your life. God will protect you. God will advise you as far as what steps you need to take and how to take those steps and when to take those steps. Not just why you need to take the steps because the why is the easiest part to figure out. Everyone loves to say, what is your why? What is your why? What is your why? But to be honest with you, your why is not going to help your strategy. Your how, that is your strategy. Your when is your timing. Your where is your location. And if you put all that in your GPS, it adds up to God's placement and strategy. GPS, that is what it is. So we must allow God to operate through us and place us where we need to be so we can receive the counseling of God. We must learn how to renew our mind on a daily basis so we can receive the counseling of God. It is not some sort of strange mystical power to receive the counseling of God. But then again, it is because most people don't understand that they have two ears and one mouth they forget that so if you are willing to listen and process 
into your brain, which has two halves. You only have one mouth, one tongue, and two lips that are part of your speaking process with your vocal cords. But you have two halves of the brain and two ears, and we must utilize that which is unseen, which is our brain, so that we may act out in accordance to the counsel that we receive from God. Ask God, speak to God directly. Ask God for whatever it is and God will grant the desires of your heart. God will never leave you short. God will never leave you hanging. No, he did not leave Jesus hanging on the cross. That was Jesus' assignment. That was his task. And we must know what our task is in our lives. And our task is to be relentlessly, relentless in the pursuit of the kingdom of God. Our task is to perform God's will on this earth as it is in heaven. Because if you go to the Lord's prayer, that is essentially telling us what it is we must do. Thy will must be done. And it must be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is what Jesus Christ, the Nazareth, our Lord of hosts, was telling us during that prayer. Learn how to decipher the words that are in the Bible that Jesus spoke. And even though they have placed it in red writing, that is not all the words Jesus spoke. There are plenty of words that Jesus spoke that aren't in the Bible. And even though those words that Jesus spoke in the Bible have been placed there you by another human, you still cannot touch them. Because they are that powerful. And God knows what God is doing. And God knows what the man is going to do. And you seek out God further than you will find. And you will be able to receive a different level of counseling. Because whether you want to believe it or not, there are people with faith greater than that of a mustard seed. Not because they say so. Because God has placed it in them. So you must understand and not think that you are better than I, Trevon, am better than you. I cannot live like that. I must see that I have struggled my life and that I am not better than you. That I am equal to you. That I can learn from you. We must look at each other as humans. And just that, God's race, the human race, one race because that's what we are i am not part of a black race i am part of the human race yes i understand in america and in all across this world we break da things down into races and genders things of that magnitude but when someone speaks to me and asks me what i am I say I'm human. I am God's creation. I am God's child. And so are you. That's what I am. To the entire world, be blessed and stay phenomenal. Let us say a prayer because I still have to go about my day. You know what I do for a living now? You should. If you don't, I am a chef. I cook for many people around the metroplex where I reside. And it is such a blessing to be a chef and to cook for people. And most of my clients, they are of the senior culture. So to be able to cook for people's mothers, their fathers, their aunts, their uncles, their grandmothers, their great grandmothers, their grandfathers, great grandfathers, to be able to cook for people and see them thrive and go beyond a hundred years, that's a blessing. To know that Jesus Fed the masses. Okay, before I go, I'll get off topic a little bit. I know Jesus fed the masses. So when I was a kid, 
and I heard Pastor Mac T. Fleming at Freedom Missionary Baptist Church in Oak Cliff, Dallas, Texas. When I heard him say that Jesus fed the masses and he only did it with a few loaves of bread and a few fish, I was like, what? I remember that. I was about 10. And I just couldn't believe it. How did Jesus do that? I just couldn't. And he did it more than one time. I was like, wow. Hmm. So when I heard Pastor say that, I had to talk to my Sunday school teacher at the time, Sister Seamster. Such a beautiful woman in character, spirit. Man. She said, yes, go home. This is where it is in the Bible. Then I went home, I read, and I talked to my mama about it some more. And I got older, and I just, just was fascinated by that. And I just, I wanted to be a chef. I knew I wanted to be a chef. So I feel so blessed. I feel so honored to be able to feed the masses in their spirit, through social media, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and then turn around and be a chef and feed the masses in their belly as well. To be able to cook for thousands of people and then turn around and be able to speak the word of God to thousands of people is a blessing. And I understand it is a blessing. So whatever it is you ask God for, understand and believe within your heart. Your pursuit, it has to be relentlessly relentless in your dream, in your goals, and in your aspiration. You must be that way. And God will give it to you. So I get the opportunity to feed the masses spiritually and also as a chef in a profession. I've had opportunities to cook for 20,000 people in group setting, working at hotels in a day. I've had the opportunity to make over 2,000 pizzas over a weekend, 700 myself. In a day, myself, in a day, 500 hand-tossed pizzas. I've had the opportunity to cook many steaks, thousands, to fabricate, disarticulate many different animals as a chef and to feed the masses. And that's what I get to do now. I get to step out and still do the work of God. So when you get to step out and do the work of God, you should carry it anywhere. I don't care what you do for a living. I don't care. It doesn't matter if you are a garbage man. Guess what? Give God praise because you, guess what? Cleanliness of the spirit and of the flesh and of God's property, this earth, is next to godliness. We must understand that God has law and order. So everyone that is in law enforcement, I ask for God to protect you, to keep you covered. I ask God to speak to all the ones that need to be spoken to so they may be utilized as God's vessel. I don't care if you drive 18 wheels for a living, do you think that that load that you're carrying is not important? It is. It can have my child's medical equipment in it. It is. And I thank you for traveling all across this country and also going into Mexico and Canada and back through the United States. I thank you for driving those trucks. All the flight attendants, thank you. All of the soldiers, mm, thank you. I was never in the military.
I have a father that was a mm, military man, family members, military. And I thank all of you because I was never in the service. So I thank you for protecting me and my family and my country and the world. Politicians, I ask for you to soften your hearts and listen to us as individuals. This We put you there and you all keep forgetting we put you there. Listen to what we are saying as a collective, as people. We don't care about parties. We care about being who we are. I live in America. I'm a citizen of America. Right here, America. That's what I am. All this party stuff, I don't care about it. Listen to us, politicians. Listen. Please. And thank you to the ones that do listen, that do seek counsel from people in the community. Thank you. I'm here because God has placed me here. You're here because God has placed you here. We must learn how to appreciate each other, not bash each other. Learn how to love each other. One race, God's race, the human race. That is all. That is it. And we must continue to be that way. Let us say a prayer for unification. Our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Nazareth by way of grace, mercy, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you for that spiritual counsel. We thank you for that spiritual endowment. And Father, we thank you for the earthly counsel. We thank you for the earthly endowment, Father, that you have given us, the earthly materials that you have given us, the spiritual matter and materials that you have given us, Father. You have given us so much, Father. Let us be aware of the blessings that you have provided for us, Father. Let us not waver, Father, from you. Father, let us stand full of rigor, arms locked together, side to side, fingers intertwined together, not ball, Father. Let us be one race, God's race, the human race, filled with love, care, compassion, which is all natural for us all, Father. I've seen many people donate money to people they don't know. I've done it, so I know we are all full of love. I know it is in us, Father. And let that love come straight, rising to the top, just like cream, God. Oh, yes. We need that love, Father. We need that love because love conquers pride, Father. Love rules all, Father. And love can be tough, God. Love can be stern, God. Love can be rigid, Father. Love can be cold, God. Love can be callous too, Father. But it is love. It is love, God. And we thank you for that tough love because we know love can be warm. We know love can be caring. We know love can be kind. We know love can be filled with compassion. We know love can be filled with nothing but goodness. So, Father, we understand you created all. Fill us with that love, Father. But just let us know what love we are receiving, though, God. Please let us know the love we are receiving so we can differentiate and understand and take that count. For we love you, God. We love you, Jesus Christ the Nazarene, our Savior. We love you, Holy Spirit, and we claim you, God, as our personal Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen, 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 and amen. God is good and we must continue to keep our faith, keep our rigor, be blessed and stay phenomenal. And remember, always plan strategically right here for your life in your mind or your life will strategically plan for you, meaning the world will just do whatever it wants with you because you have no plan, you have no strategy. You got to have a plan, you got to have a strategy. All right, be blessed, stay phenomenal again.